Let all proclaim to the glory of the Father that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord. Let all proclaim to the glory of the Father that Jesus Christ is Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. My sisters and brothers, my dear families in your homes, my dear religious sisters in your own communities, my dear fathers in your parishes, dear friends all over, Mumbai, the Archdiocese of Bombay, India, and abroad. If you've gone through the whole of the Easter week and come to the very end of the week, and we immerse ourselves more and more in this great Easter feast, let's begin this Eucharist by putting ourselves in the Lord's presence, asking his forgiveness for our sins. As we humbly say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We praise God once again for the glorious resurrection, saying glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the abundance of your grace give increase to the peoples who believe in you, Look with favor on those you have chosen and clothe with blessed immortality those reborn through the sacrament of baptism. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Kindly sit. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The rulers, elders, and scribes were astonished at the assurance shown by Peter and John, considering them they were uneducated laymen, and they recognized them as associates of Jesus. But when they saw the man who had been cured standing by their side, they could find no answer. So they ordered them to stand outside while the Sanhedrin had a private discussion. What are we going to do with these men? They asked. It is obvious to everyone in Jerusalem that a miracle has been worked through them in public and we cannot deny it. But to stop the whole thing spreading any further among the people, let us caution them never to speak to anyone in this name again. So they called them in and gave them a warning on no account to make statements or to teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John retorted, 
you must judge whether in god's eyes it is right to listen to you and not to god we cannot promise to stop proclaiming what we have seen and heard the court repeated the warning and then released them they could not think of any way to punish them since all the people were giving glory to god for what had happened the word of the lord thanks, thanks be to god a response alleluia 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 can you repeat alleluia 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 give thanks to the lord for he is good for his love has no end the lord is my strength and my song he was my savior there are shouts of joy and victory in the tents of the just a response alleluia 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 the lord's right hand has triumphed his right hand raised me up i shall not die i shall live and recount his deeds i was punished i was punished by the lord but not doomed to die a response alleluia 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 open to me the gates of holiness i will enter and give thanks this is the lord's own gate where the just may enter i will thank you for for you have given answer and you are my savior a response alleluia 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 gospel acclamation alleluia alleluia this day was made by the lord we rejoice and are glad alleluia the lord be with you and, and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to mark glory to you o lord when jesus rose early on the first day of the week he appeared first to mary magdalene from whom he had cast out seven demons she went and told those who had been with him as they were mourned and wept but when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her they would not believe it after this he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country and they went back and told the rest but they did not believe them afterwards he appeared to the leaven themselves as they sat at table and he upbraided them for their unbelief and their hardness of heart because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen and he said to them go into all the world and preach the gospel to the whole creation the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ my dear brothers and sisters my dear families my dear little sisters friends we've been hearing all these days all the days of this week the gospel passages about the resurrection resurrection events jesus rising and appearing on easter sunday itself for the vigil the vigil we had the gospel of matthew the narration from matthew and on sunday morning the narration from john now right through the week we've had from the four evangelists the four writers of the gospels their narration of the resurrection event monday it was matthew tuesday john's narration wednesday and thursday luke's narration the whole thing of the traveling the disciples at emaus on the way to emaus and then friday yesterday again john the incident on the seashore tiberius and today we have the gospel of mark telling us also about the resurrection of the lord and incidents that's why it's not consequential the same gospel
pass, uh, writer and then one after another. They're different, four of them writing about the resurrection and uh, the gospels are therefore, it's, it's uh, the sequence might be difficult to see which hap apparition had f happened first, which happened second. Uh, we can trace after studying the texts exactly more or less, but uh, we can't be uh, fully sure. Uh, scripture scholars tell us that there are references to about 11 apparitions of our Lord, 11 uh, narrated in the scriptures, uh, and continuously Jesus is uh, giving a message. Why did our Lord appear uh, so many times? Evidently to convince, first of all, his own small group Apostles and disciples, he did not want to create a controversy by appearing there in public before everybody else. But the small group, which was, which was going to be commissioned to go and give the good news, they were the ones who had to be convinced. Therefore, our Lord appeared to them over and over again. And as I was saying, we hear from different points of view. Matthew, writing for the Jews. Mark, who was the secretary of Peter, today's gospel. We've got Luke, who was a medical person, um, probably St. Paul narrated to him. Uh, and, of course, we have John, the beloved disciple, giving a very often a reflection, a theological reflection on the event. Jesus uh, upbraids the apostles and disciples for not believing. He had said, we've heard that so often when you, when you hear the gospel passages on the weekdays of the year, Every now and then he would say, the Son of Man will be given to the chief priests and, high, and the elders, and then on the third day he will rise again. And then gradually after he said he'll be handed over and put to death. So it was gradually he was revealing to them, preparing them, but they didn't accept it. Even after his uh, crucifixion, he was sad, dejected. We heard what happened on the, for the two disciples on the way to Emmaus, but then they saw the Lord and they rushed back. Others didn't believe them. Mary Magdalene went, oh, didn't, they didn't believe what she said until our Lord himself appeared and tells them, oh, you of weak hearts, you can't see, I had told you so often, and then now I'm here with you. What more evidence did they need? And Jesus tells them, gives them a mission, go and tell the whole world the good news. The good, what's the good news? That God has come into the world, God died, God has saved us, we can go to heaven, life has a meaning, pain and sin are a consequence of the first fall, are really something has happened, but we can get out of this pain and sin into light. And then therefore go and give the good news. The apostles, in the first readings, all these days we are hearing the readings from the Acts in the first reading. That's the history of the early church. And we, we heard the narration of how Peter cured that cripple over there. And now, because he said, I've done this in the name of Jesus whom you crucified, they arrested him. Today's beautiful uh, narration of the first, uh, the first reading of this whole trial is amazing. I said before, same Annas and Caiaphas who were so powerful, they maneuvered the people to ask for Jesus' death. They maneuvered the trial, even got the pilot, the governor, to uh, send in Jesus to death. They now are trying the same disciple of the same man whom they have crucified. And he has the courage to tell them, you crucified him, but God has raised him. He's alive. And in his name, here this man who was lying over there, a cripple is cured. Look at him. What more evidence do you have? What a contrast, my sisters and brothers. The contrast of Peter, who was so frightened, I was saying before, frightened, the maid frightened him, the, also that passerby said, your accent Galilean frightened him, and said, no, no, no. And now he's not afraid to even challenge the Annas, Caiaphas, the whole Sanhedrin. Very wealthy, very influential, very powerful men, very educated. What a transformation for Peter. Sisters and brothers, what a transformation also. Look at this. Transformation of these Annas and Caiaphas also. On Friday they were saying, send him to death. 
Caiaphas said it's better for one man to die than for the whole country. And now, after all that has happened, Jesus has been crucified. And Peter, Peter so mild before, now is confronting them. And they don't have the courage to shout back at him. They say, you go away, let's discuss among ourselves. There must have been a big discussion. They could not doubt the fact that this man was cured. How could they explain it? Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I, I've got to tell you that. So then they call them back again and tell them now, okay, now don't speak about this anymore. That's all. They're frightened. In a way, have they begun their conversion also? Annas and Caiaphas, and the, I'm sure there was a big discussion and debate about them, and many began, their eyes began to be opened, seeing the fruit of the resurrection. They had not seen our Lord, seen the fruit of the resurrection. Sisters and brothers, we've gone the whole week hearing about the apparitions of our Lord. And for you and for me again, we've been at home, locked up over there, uh, for, had more time to reflect perhaps, to attend the Mass and, and to think and to pray, to be together with the family. What is our response about this uh, Lord's resurrection? The Lord has risen indeed. There is no doubt about it. You've heard so many narrations in the Gospels. It is as a fact. And go out and preach the good news, Jesus says. You of little heart. Says the same to you and to me. Go out and tell everybody that Jesus is risen. That he is not dead. That, de that death could not have control over him. How would we show this? By our works, first of all. By If we are convinced, there should be a joy on our face. A confidence in our face that we know the truth. We know about Jesus. And Jesus has died. Jesus has risen. He is victorious. And he is our master. He's the center of our lives. We are baptized in him. We have received the Holy Spirit. We should go out with joy. Pope Francis said a couple of times, when people come out of church, sometimes I think they have come out of a funeral. There's no joy on their face. On our faces, there should be joy. The coronavirus threat will, is on. It will, it will be conquered. And then we should go, we'll go back to normal lives. We should go back much more convinced about our faith. The Easter event should have transformed us interiorly, that Jesus is really risen. We've got to get back to our normal work in our offices, factories, schools, wherever we are working. But also, maybe this is the time for us to think of our own commitment to the community. If really Jesus is risen, he's victorious, how can I be part of this community and contribute to this community by my works, by my heart, by my activities, being more and more a part of my parish, being more involved in parish activities, feeling more that this is a family of faith, a family of the risen Lord. Sisters and brothers, let us thank the Lord for the gift of faith. Thank the Lord for the gift of his son Jesus and the resurrection. But ask the Lord also that the resurrection should gradually influence us that we are convinced of the resurrection not only in our minds, also in our hearts, and act accordingly. People full of the risen Lord, full of the confidence that the Spirit is with us, certain that we have the truth. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for your goodness from this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth in work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mysteries of water and wine.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine which we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you please to receive this sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins and cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim, acclaim you, O Lord, but during this week above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. All who died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, let's say together the Our Father, preparing ourselves to receive Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but at the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let's offer you the sign of peace. Christ's peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive him. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O divine guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you 
for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass ended. Go in the peace of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Once again, a happy conclusion of this Easter week. God bless each one of you and your families. God bless you. We pray now for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord.